Hi, Facebook. Hi, Facebook. Uh, this is Jerry Powell. I'm coming to you a little bit late today. Uh, I had some technical difficulties and are about 13 minutes late. And we're, uh, we're on right now. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a couple of different things. Again, I'm coming from Rhythmia Life Advancement Center in Costa Rica. We're a plant-based, sacred plant medicine-based life advancement center in Costa Rica. We have uh, an amazing program for, uh, for people here, and I'm going to get into that later. But today I'm going to talk about something that is super important to everybody who comes here. When people come here, they have four major things that they're, that they're working on. And it's either love, health, happiness, or money. And more often than not, it's money. And uh, I love the spiritual community. You're, you're my community. Uh, as on a whole, I'm going to make a, a blanket statement. On a whole, uh, you're a community that does have um, its own difficulties sometimes with amassing money. There's there's a uh, an energetic disconnect uh, with a lot of people when it comes to making money, especially in the spiritual space. I'm going to ask you if you have anybody who's in the spiritual business in your life and you want to share this to them, or you just want to share it to your community. Please do us a favor and share this. Uh, the stuff that I'm going to be talking about today um, is so important for. For, for making money in 2018. Um, it's super, super, super important. And, and to give you a little thing, I don't talk about shit that I'm not qualified to talk about. I have a uh, little history with making money myself. Uh, in my 20s, I became a millionaire. I bought my first plane. Um, in my early 30s, I took a company public and I had about $140 million net worth. Uh, I went uh, bankrupt in, in my later 30s, I think I was 38 when, when and it wasn't a, a technical bankrupt, but I went broke when I was 38 and I found myself with a negative net worth of about $6 million. I started a company at 38, another company that I sold at 41 for about $90 million cash. And so my experience in life has been mostly super successful in business and also some failures so that I know both sides of it. Um, and I'm going to come at you today from a really unique perspective. And I want you, again, if you can, share this. If you know somebody that wants to make money, and making money is, is uh, like it's a bad saying in, in, in uh, the spiritual community, and that's bullshit. Uh, I want to get to, the, to the, the truth of the truth of this thing. So that's my history of making money. Right now I own, I own a uh, spiritual center in Costa Rica, about 100 bed. Uh, spiritual center is a, uh, a really life-changing place. Uh, usually I talk about the spiritual side of things, but today, again, I'm going to be talking about money, your money. And the first thing I want to tell you is this, is that you have to get rid of all voodoo and superstition. Uh, they're, 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 uh, they're so closely tied in this uh, conscious community that there's so much voodoo and there's so much superstition, and it's all bullshit. Uh, if you see somebody on Facebook and they're saying, oh, we don't know how to make money in a spiritual business. I don't know if anybody knows how to make money in a spiritual business. They're full of shit. And there's a real good chance that they don't, that there was a half truth. They don't know how to make money in a spiritual business because they don't know how to make money in any business. And there is no distinction other than personal. There is no distinction between a business and a spiritual business because, because, if there was such a thing as a spiritual business, then there would have to be something else that wasn't, okay? And I don't know one business in the world where you're not dealing with spirits. I don't care, I don't care uh, if you're in the car business. I don't care if you own a gentleman's club. I don't care what you're doing. It's all spiritual business because we're dealing spirit to spirit. If there's some business that's computer to computer without, without a... Uh, any human intervention at all, uh, and the person that signed the contract wasn't a person, was a robot, that might be a non-spiritual business. I haven't seen one in the history of the world, okay? So the first thing we've got to know is that we have to know that every business is a spiritual business, okay? 
And then, then business rules apply. So let's talk about this. So a little, just a little tiny bit about this, and then we're going to get into it. And hi, everybody. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Adam. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Lisa. Hi, everybody. Ellen. Hi, guys. Uh, and we're going to talk about the spiritual business. So let's say this. Let's say that next week we're going to get rid of Thursday and call it Plan Day. And I just want to give you this by uh, an analogy, right? So we're going to have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Plan Day, and Friday. If, if I told you to jump out of a five-story building on Plan Day and, 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 and see what happens, because I changed the name of the day, you're still going down. Gravity still wins, right? So, so I'm going to tell you the principles that I'm going to talk to you about today are real, absolute uh, facts of Earth existence. And I can only talk about Earth because that's we we only have our businesses on Earth right now. So, so let's just talk about Earth. People say, and I hear this all the time on with with the spiritual community, that oh, I don't know if anybody knows how to make money and and in this new paradigm, which is absolute, unadulterated fucking bullshit. It's bullshit. So stay away from from people that use vagities and people that 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 question things. Because right now, uh, if my calculator is right, last year Walmart did five hundred billion dollars. They know a little bit about making money, a little tiny bit. Uh, Gary V, tremendous motivator, tremendous money making guy. Uh, I bet he's making $10 million a quarter himself in his pocket. Deepak Chopra doesn't seem to have a problem making money. So anybody who tells you that making money in a spiritual business is different or we don't know how to make money in a new paradigm, they don't know how to make money in a new paradigm. Okay? Because nothing, nothing, nothing ever changes when it comes to making money. So if you can release yourself of the voodoo, because any voodoo is contra energy. So... The first thing that we look at in business is we want to make sure that the energy is all flowing in the same direction, that there is no contra energy. So, so you got to get rid of voodoo, superstition, all of these things, and just deal with gravity. Just deal with, with this. I can promise you this. If you, if you listen to me, and if you put one foot in front of the other, and you just do what you're being told, just do uh, these things, these steps, you're going to make money. All right? I tell you, when you're listening to people talk about this on the internet, check them out. Like there's there's couples and there's all kinds of people for, for claiming I made bunches of money and I traveled the world. Oh yeah, what is a bunch of money? Because we're all different, right? To a guy like me, maybe a bunch of money is a quarter of a billion dollars. To someone else, a bunch of money is thirty eight dollars. So be really specific and stay away from people who speak in vague terms. If they're speaking in vague terms, it allows for charlatanism and, and different things that, that are there to manipulate you. So stay away. If, we're, if, you're, if you're talking about money, you're talking about truth, just real truth, right? So, so let's talk about, about, uh, about money and the truth of money, okay? The first thing, I have, I have a, little, uh, a little program called Truthonomics, and, and Truthonomics is designed to help people make money. And, and the second and third step are all I'm going to deal with today, okay? That's all I'm going to deal with. So what is the second step? The second step is coming to where you are about who you are right now, okay? The longer you lie to yourself about who you are, the more contra energy happens within your sphere, and the more contra energy that happens, the more stifled you become, the more the more uh, uh, tense you become, and and what happens is the situation gets encrusted because of this contra energy. So we want to remove the contra energy. How do we do that? We tell the truth about ourselves, which means we tell the truth about us. We tell the truth about our business. We tell the truth about our strengths and weaknesses. This is how you make money. This is the first step in it. Is where the hell am I? Who am I? What is my business? Am I adding value? Am I fucking good at what I'm doing? Am I? Is this what I should be doing? These are the truths. These are the big questions. Am I charging too much or too little? These are things that you gotta be super, super, super truthful about. I gotta tell you what. 
You can stay in denial for a hundred years in business if you want. You can stay in denial for a hundred years in your life if you want. And shit is not going to change. Not one goddamn thing is going to change until you get to your truth about who you are. So let's say, let's say you're an energy person. Now here's the thing. I know energy folks. Uh, I, have, I have a good friend who's a really good one, and he charges seventy thousand dollars, and I think he has about I don't know sixty or seventy people paying that a year. Like he's really good at it. So so if you're an energy person. What you, want to, what you want to make sure is, is that you're good. How do you know if you're good? Your clients will tell you how good you are. Not with their words, but with their pocketbook. Okay? So, so if, you're, if you're, and there's a whole system to this. So, so let's first talk about who we are. So I want you to sit down and tell the truth. And it's probably the thing you're afraid about in your own business. It's probably the thing that you're afraid of. So, so this thing that's lurking in the back is true. Uh, it, it, it is true. So, like, bring it to the forefront because it's only true. It's only true when it's in denial. When it comes to acceptance, the whole thing changes. The energy of it, it itself changes. So, in other words. If, if I'm a great person, I'm a shitty marketer. I'm a, let, let's say that I'm a great acro aerobic guy or acro yoga guy or whatever the thing is. I'm great at this particular thing, but I'm a shitty marketer. Well, instead of keeping and pushing and pushing and pushing, the moment that you say you're a shitty marketer, all of the options in the universe open up to you. All the options in the universe open up to you. And, and so, 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 so in that moment, uh, there's truth. And from that truth, you can build. See, here, here's the craziest thing. The universe is kind to progress. Everything around you is conspiring to help you with your progress, but the cost of it is the truth. So you have to tell the truth about where you're at first. So, so because there's two pieces to this, right? The two most important pieces, which are actually step two and three of the whole truth anonymous program. And the, and the second and third step, the second is to be absolutely truthful about where you are in that moment, about who you are, about where you are, about your strengths, about your weaknesses, about your business. You know, there, there's times I used to, to, to get offered to do uh, business consulting, right? And I, I freaking hated it. And because and, uh, I would go into, you know, a business and, and, and I used to get paid about 20 grand a day and I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do them because it, it was, uh, I was making more money in what I was doing than, than, than doing that. But I go into business and I would see a guy and he'd, he'd have, uh, his sister would be doing the books and Uncle Fester would be like in production and all this stuff and you would look at it and this guy's been in denial, been in 20 years, has the same thing. And by making some maneuvers, getting the sister out of doing the books and get Uncle Fester out of production and just telling the truth about the company, you could, you could uh, double his revenue, right? So, so what the thing is, you don't want to pay this guy 20 grand. You're the guy. You're the woman. Tell yourself about, about what it is about your business that's holding your business up. You know in the back what it is. You know it's just that it's not in your forefront. But it's there. It's it's there lingering, and it's that thing. The thing that you're afraid that it is, it is. So this requires some brave, this is brave stuff, because, because the universe loves uh, progress. It does. And, and, and therefore, it favors the brave. This is the, the natural selection, the universe. Everything is favoring the brave, right? So, so the first thing I do, and you know what's the bravest thing someone can do? is tell the truth, right? It's really easy to get lost, and it's really easy to make up stories, and it's really easy, and the longer that you do, you want to tell stories for another year, fine, you're going to stay neutral for another year. You want to tell stories for another year, fine. Uh, so, so, like, so, so, so you got to be truthful about, about this, okay? So the second thing is this, is that in this thing of, of truth, what this truth is, it will tell you that this is who I am in this moment, then how do I augment that? If my truth is that I have a handicap over this or I have something uh, a little wrong here, 
how do I make something exceptional? Okay? And that comes down to now, now what we're doing. Now we got to be, because the universe favors truth, always, right? So now we have to have our product that we're true about. And, 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 and this is the thing I'm going to get into the second in a minute about if you're starting a new business. I'll talk about that in a second. But we have to have our product, and we have to advertise our product correctly, right? And we have to measure it accurately, okay? Because it all has to be true. If I if I am selling a potion, an elixir, and I say, hey, you drink this, you drink this elixir, and your IQ goes up 20 points. Well, fuck, then I better be sure that when you drink this elixir, your IQ goes up 20 points. You see? Because truth has to be there. I know there's people on the internet, and I know people that are talking about manifesting money, and and they can't even afford an apartment. What they but 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 some of these folks. Not, not all these folks, this is not, I'm just talking about specific little things. What they should be saying is, hey, look, it. I'm going to now tell people how to get an apartment without any money. Now, that's the truth, and that will sell. Do you see? So we got it. There's an audience for everything as long as it's good. Because I tell you what, it's damn hard to keep getting people to give you apartments without money. But certain people figured it out. Now, that's what they should be advertising. That's what they should be advertising. So, so. The first thing is we got to be truthful about what it is we do. And here's the harder part of it. Then we got to be incredible at it. Incredible at it. I'll tell you a little thing. When Michael Jordan didn't make the varsity basketball team, fact, I didn't make his varsity basketball team. Now, in that moment, you know what he could have said? Fuck that. I'm the greatest basketball player who ever lived. I'm going to quit and I'm not going to play this game again. F, F the school. But he didn't. You know what he said? There's a reason I didn't get picked, right? And then he worked hard at it. And it's the last time he never got picked for anything, okay? So, so the next part of this is that you have to become excellent at what you do. And, and a lot of people are out there selling some cosmic bullshit shortcut that's bullshit. It's just bullshit. Here's the truth. If you're... Uh, making you know vegan brownies then god damn it they better be good and, and i want to tell you what so this is this is one of the uh, the clues to this thing the universe and and when i say the universe let's think of what that universe is it's everything in totality right so you my brothers and sisters are my universe so if i'm doing the right thing in my business the universe my brothers and sisters are going to be showing me because they're going to be buying my thing, right? Real simple shit, right? So the universe is going to tell you if if you're doing this thing right. And if you're not, here's the first thing, like uh, in the army, they teach you, when you're digging and you hit water, the first thing you do is stop digging. The first thing you do. So, so if your business uh, isn't producing yield, then stop and analyze. Analyze what it is that's going on. What's going on? And if you're starting a business, here's another thing. A lot of you are, are and then listen to this, when I say a lot of you, that's a lot of you, that's a lot of me, that's a lot of love. I love all this stuff. But a lot of people sit on the fence and say, you know what? I really can't start a business because I don't have $5 million. Right, and they say, and they can be really good at something. They won't do it. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you that that you can do everything that you want and keep the job that you have and just do what you love and make one, make one. So what does that mean? Write the first page of your book. Write one page. Right. Uh, uh, you want to open up uh, a, a vegan restaurant? Make one uh, meal. Make one meal. Like make one dress your dress designer make one whatever it is you do if you're a healer and and listen a lot of you are walking around especially if you're watching this broadcast there's about a 90 percent chance that you're a light worker or a light warrior in some way and you have some healing quality that you don't even know about and the thing is well how do you get to practice it i'm going to show you whatever business it is that you go to your regular day job i don't care what you do if you, if you work in a bank or a 
or an office or, or whatever the hell it is. You go and you do that and you come home and you start doing your dream. Do the thing that you love to do and you're good at. And then all of a sudden, and you say, well, I can't sell it. Then you know what? Give it away. Give it away. Start doing healings. Give them away. And get good, even better at it and better at it and better at it. And next thing you know, uh, people are going to want to buy them from you. Right? People are going to want to buy them from you. And then they're going to want to pay you more and pay you more and pay you more. And you can do that by testing the ceiling of your gift. So in other words, there's motivational guys out there that will will give you like an hour uh, of their time for $500. And yet Tony Robbins wants forty or 70000 I forget how much he gets for the hour. And the thing is this, I'd rather pay Tony Robbins. And so would a lot of other people because this, because when you get good at it, you're providing value all the time. So so look, at, and I'm going to give you an example. I bought a, a phone number one time. I paid a dollar. They're having a special thing for a dollar. And I turn around, I think I sold that phone number for about $400,000. And people said, oh, my God, that's terrible. But the people that bought it from me probably got $4 million worth of value out of it. So, so forget about pricing. Pricing has to do with value. So this all goes back to who am I in this business? What am I in this business? And I'm not going to argue or, or, or counter-argue the virtues of money. This is not for this time. I'm talking to people who want to go and make money. And, and, and the crazy thing is this. We run a spiritual resort, and the people that come here are beautiful, wonderful people, and, and money is always on their list. Okay? It's always on their list. So, so there's something about it. So, so forget about the good and the bad of it. There is no, there's nothing. There's, some, there's people, and forget about good and bad. Uh, there's people who are living in accord with the universe, Right? who make money, and there are people who not who, who are not and make money. So the making money and, 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 and being a good person or being in the court, it, 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 it's two separate things. It's chalk and cheese. They're, they're different things, and they're not really interconnected, okay? So, so what, what I'm trying to tell you is that you have to be honest about who you are and be honest about your business. And when you talk about your business, don't talk in vague uh, things, because if you speak in vagaries, what's going to happen is this. People are going to think that you lie to them, right? And then, and then it's going to create problems for you in growing your business. Talk in truths. Find ways to measure your business. If you're uh, a motivator and you've made a lot of money, tell them you've made a lot of money. Tell them how much, all right, so that you're not... You're not creating uh, lies. Uh, if, you're, if you're in the healing business, tell them the truth about how your clients feel after this healing. If you're, if you're uh, a psychic, tell them how you predict it. Like, you've got to be specific and be clear. And then charge what you think it's worth. And if you don't sell any, then they didn't think it was worth that much. Do you understand? So I saw someone on... Uh, one of the spiritual things, and, and the person said, "Oh, I'm charging. I have I have three left in these workshops, or forty thousand, or something." And there was no value in it. And the, the 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 thing is, is you can charge whatever you want when you're giving value equal to the money. So so that's a pricing issue. That's a that's a whole other thing. The second thing that I want you to do is to be really specific. You cannot drive your business without knowing where you're driving it to. I, I want to be say that again. So this is, this is number two and three. You cannot drive your business without picking a destination to drive it to. Sounds crazy, but it's true. So, so when, when somebody comes to me and says, you know, they're in the, uh, a healing modality, and they're saying, oh, I can do eight people a day, and right now I can only do two people, and I'm saying, well, where are you trying to go with it? Specifically, where exactly are you trying to go with it? And people say, I want to go to where I'm comfortable. That ain't good enough. It's none of this is good enough. So you gotta know exactly where the business is and exactly what it looks like. And then you have to know exactly where you want to take that business. Like I'm gonna tell you, my my and I I have been retired for nine years or eight years, something like that. Eight years, eight years or nine years. 
And, uh, and when I decided to get back into business and I decided to buy this resort in Costa Rica, what I said to myself was, I want to make this the best place of its type in the world. That's really friggin' specific shit. I want to make it the best place of its type in the world. And so when you take on something like that, and, and I wouldn't do one thing. I wouldn't do one thing in business unless I wanted to be the best in the world. So if you're a horoscope person, or if you're an astrology person, or if you're uh, a psychic, or if you're a medium, or if you're a, a thing, my only thing is I want to be the best in the world. Now that's a tall thing. But when you strive for something like that, if that's the goal, or, or I want to do this, and I want to work four hours a day, and I want to take the rest of the time off, and with that time, I want to spend it with my family. Whatever it is, you have to have a place to point it to. So, 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 so you've got to, got to, got to be specific about what you want to do with your business. Because if you're not specific about it, how do you know if you're doing any good? There's no way of telling if you're doing good. Uh, and and I tell you, if your business is just, oh, just let me make a living, that's going to be a real, real, real hard one. That's going to be a hard one because it's vague. And, and your idea of what constitutes a living versus someone else's, and you're putting up all these different contra energies into the universe when when what the universe responds to is specifics. Okay, the universe really responds to specifics. Uh, so does anyone else. So so uh, uh, <laughs> this is a crazy story, but but a guy wrote to me on on through Facebook, and he said, "Hey, I wanna I want to do." Uh, your some of your uh, Facebook marketing. And I said, okay, great. You know, I said, I said, what do you charge? He says, I'll leave that up to you. I said, okay, great. I'll pay you a dollar. How'd that work out for you? So the thing is, what I'm going to tell you is, you've got to be super specific about what your program is, what you're offering, what you're charging, and what the customer is getting, and all of that has to has to work. Uh, you have to provide value. You have to provide value. I don't think, and I know Tony Robbins, I keep talking about him because he's an amazing cat. He's an amazing cat. Or Gary V, another amazing cat. Guys, just on the money side. Uh, you know, very few people charge about, about very few people complain about paying Tony the, the money that they pay him because he provides value. So, so, you know, there's a difference. So, like, the thing is, right, two different cars, a Ford Pinto and a Rolls Royce. They're both cars, but they, they have a different value to them, right? So, so the thing that I'm going to try to, uh, to convey to you is, is just for this new year, just for this new year to tell the truth. And if you're having trouble telling the truth, ask your friends. And, and ask your friends to try not to make you happy, but really tell what is the truth about my business. What, what do you see? And, and ask someone who really knows Who's not afraid of telling you the truth? This is the the beauty of this thing is that 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 there is truth. If you can't do that, come down here and do some plant medicine with us, and that'll tell you the truth. And I'd love to have you. Uh, the next thing is this. So now let's say that we're square. Let's say that that I'm um, a healer, and I I work in a bank, and I started my little healing business. And on the weekends, I posted a sign in my cafeteria, and at the cafeteria at my church or synagogue or place of worship or baseball field or wherever the hell I'm at, and I put up that this week and I'm giving away free humans. And I get damn good at it. I get good at it. Now all of a sudden I'm, I'm creating this value. And now I'm in the world and I know that I'm good at it. I know that I'm providing a good service. I start charging and I'm here. Here's the other thing I've got to tell you. So, so here's what the universe rewards. Okay? The truth, accuracy, and persistence. Now here's the thing: nobody wants it. Everybody wants to buy some program, and then, and then uh, they want they want a way to make money without doing work, and they want to do it in some hocus pocus kind of fucking way that makes this magic happen. And then there ain't none. There ain't none. See, the magic comes from when you're honest with yourself. You vibrate at a way that draws things in. That's not magic. That's math and science. Okay. And and, and 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 there's work involved in it. You know, I'm going to show you every overnight success story is about 10 years. 
Every overnight success story is about 10 years. So the universe rewards accuracy and persistence. You know how I know it does? Because I've seen rivers carved through rock. Water, soft water, persistent water is stronger than rock. So, so persistence is what wins the day. Once you're truthful with yourself, because because here's here's where this gets confusing. If your whole business is based on a lie, right, and you're out of integrity with, if there's contra energy going anywhere, and you're persistent. Oh my God, you're in for a long run. You're in for a long run. So, like these things are like wheels of a tricycle. That each one of them is really goddamn important, right? So, so the first thing we want to be is be honest about our business and honest about us. You know what I'm going to tell you something? If, if you're a, a healer and you hate marketing, you shouldn't be doing it because you can't do anything you hate and do it well and do it right. You can't. So you need something else. And this is where truthfulness comes in. So now I want something else to do my marketing, right? And now I'm going to be on the thing, and I'm going to put together this little alliance of aligned people that are going down the road and making all this happen and making this accumulation of wealth and, and all of these things. But, but persistence is what wins the day in this, in this regard. And so, you know, you can look at, at, at like, in, in my experience of, of, and I've done both. I've gone super, 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 super broke. You know how I lost all my money? I'm telling you how. Because I wouldn't realize the truth of the stock market. Uh, at one point, I had about $140 million in stock. And uh, and everybody was saying, oh, the market's overvalued. And a part of me knew I shouldn't even be. And I had all of my money invested in equities. And a part of me knew that I shouldn't be there, and I did it anyway. So it all starts with a lie. Like, I knew, but I thought, oh, I'll be a little quicker than, and I should not have been in it. Right. So and so that was my biggest life lesson was was uh, anymore. I, I promised myself that I wouldn't lie to myself about business. Right. And so like I've made mistakes before, but I got out of them. OK, like when I sold my company, my last company, I sold it for about 90 million dollars. But there were there were most years, I believe we made about netted close to a million dollars a month. And uh, and, and I, I had minor hiccups where I made mistakes that were based on lies, like, like, nah, I don't need to, to do this thing in such a complete way. And back in my mind, I, I knew I should have been doing it. So I had these skirmishes, and I, I, I paid close enough uh, uh, attention to, to, to being, you know, to being real and true about these things. Um, uh, yeah, so I see Austin. Hi, Austin. Austin here. I'm going to answer some questions. You guys have some questions. And I see Austin says, I don't agree that one should be judged how good they are at something by how much people pay for it. Well, you might not believe it, but that's the way the universe works. So that that's like, and, then, and this is what I mean about this, right? So you could, you could say, you could deny how the universe works and try to make it... Uh, something that it's not, but, but this is why the best baseball players get the most amount of money and the best golfers make the most amount of money and the best surgeons make the most amount of money and the best spiritual leaders make the most amount of money. They tell you with their pocketbooks. That's how, unfortunately, often that's how this darn thing works. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'm just telling you the truth. So, so let's see here if I can get some more. My premonition is to show up there. You better show up there, Stan. Uh, let's see. Sponsor your weakness. Let's see, marketing for healers. Yeah, let's talk about marketing for healers. So what let's talk about marketing for healers. I, I love that subject and and because everybody's afraid to sell shit. Here's here's the craziest thing. You don't want to be the best kept secret on Wall Street. It's not how it's not how shit gets sold. So so how do you market? Well, the first thing I know is most people who are afraid of marketing have something that's energetically off within their sphere. Ah, so let's talk about that. So, 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 because you're all good people. When I when I say you're all good people, you know I do. My company here is the shadow business. We do 99% of what we do is shadow work. So, 
So when I say you're good people, I mean you're equally good and bad for choosing life. Let's say that. And and because of that, because of that, you want to be in integrity with your business. If you're afraid to market, it's what what you're saying is is that I don't feel comfortable charging people this much for what I'm doing. That's what you're saying. Or that my product isn't good enough. So so if you're having trouble marketing, the first thing you should go back to is is okay, what is it in my product that's that's making me afraid or making me making me not feel like I'm I'm in the right boat here. Uh, confidence, lack of. How do you deal with a lack of confidence? I'll tell you how. Uh, you get good at something. And and that particular thing goes away. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. There, you know, there's some I I meet such unique people here. We go through we we service thousands of people a year here, right? So I get the opportunity to meet some really unique last year twelve hundred and forty some this, this, this last year twelve hundred and forty some this year probably two thousand maybe 2,200, maybe 2,400 people. So I get to meet some really wild people in their, in their thing. And, and some of the most like confident people in one thing are like me and you in other ways. So like I'm not at all confident in, uh, in going to a cocktail party. That's not my thing, right? But, but boy, when it comes to business, I'm confident. So the, the, the lack of confidence you have is again the outpicturing of something in in the product. There's something in your product that you don't feel comfortable with. Uh, okay, when I lost everything, how did I build my confidence back again? Here's here's the, the one good thing about me, is I'm not that bright. So 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 when I lost everything, I was just like, I don't care. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this work. And I saw where I made my mistake. And I said, I'm never going to do it again. And here's what's crazy about that. I made my mistake, my mistake in stock, right? And so in my next one, I never took stock. I only took cash. Uh, so that's how, that's how I got re more confident again. Um, yeah, Sarah, what do you do to someone who tends naturally towards leadership but feels internally that I'm a great number two? Oh, very good one. I, okay, I want to support someone. Okay, here's what you gotta here's what you gotta do. You gotta get to the point where you're confident about what it is. If there's a vaguity, something that's vague in your thing, so like you, you feel that you're a good entrepreneur, but you kind of want to be uh, more confident being a number two, you gotta get to yourself and you gotta say to the universe, who am I? Am I a number one or am I a number two? And there's nothing wrong with a number two because because you see, the, the the companies we build when we're doing it right are stronger than the sum of its parts. I have to tell you what I'm in the ayahuasca business. I'm in the 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 ayahuasca business or the hotel business or whatever. So I'm in all these different businesses, and I'm not particularly good at serving ayahuasca. As a matter of fact, if I had to serve ayahuasca, I would be uh, at a loss. Uh, my last company that I had was a plastic surgery company. Uh, I owned uh, and managed 143 plastic surgery centers in the United States and the continent, 35 states. And and I don't know shit about surgery. I don't know how to perform. A, I couldn't. I couldn't perform a surgery. Uh, I can't put a bandaid on my own cut. So like, it's it's the sum of the parts. So like, you know, good doctors and good this and good that, putting them together and managing them. So so Sarah, uh, you just want to find out really, really, really what your calling is. Okay, and I'm going to tell you the easiest way to do that. This is another thing that nobody likes. This all comes down to brutal honesty with ourselves. Because because if you lie to you, are too old to continue to lie to yourself. Do you want do you want to live another year when 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 and have a muted result? See, because because here's here's the crazy thing. When you're on it, and people talk about this, they talk about being in flow and da 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 da. I don't know if there's any skiers out there. But I remember uh, I could never ski, right? And then I took, took lessons, and finally, fucking, a miracle happened. I was skiing, and then I got lost in it, and it was so easy to me. And 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 when you're right, that's how the experience. After you put in the work, like the the overnight sensation thing, right? After you put in the work and you build the bridge to take the money over, the rest of that becomes flow. 
and it becomes really easy and light and fun because you're doing what you love to do. I tell you what, I love uh, talking about uh, the miracles that happen at this place. It's, it's a miracle of, of reuniting with your soul. It's my favorite subject. It's what I love to talk about. It's something that I know about, and I love doing it, and I love the response I get from people who do it. And so this is my thing. And you can tell when you're on it. When you're on your thing, you kind of drive people a little nutty because you like talking about it. You like you're on fire for it. If you're not on fire for what you do, you're not in the right thing. So, so if I have somebody who says, you know, Jerry, you know, I want to start a business, but I'm afraid to put up the money. And that, well, you don't have to put up the money because no matter what you do in the world, you can break it down to one. You can do one of them. You can write one page. You can write a chapter. I tell you what, I have a book coming out, I don't know, in a couple of weeks. And it's published by HCI, which is the people that did Chicken Soup with the Soul. And, uh, you know, I, I, I never really wanted to, 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 to write because I never thought I could. But I sat down and I dictated one page, one page. And then two pages, three pages, eight pages, ten pages. It all starts with one. Most of us uh, don't love something enough to commit to it. Ah, so here's the thing. So, so most of us don't love something enough to commit to. And that's because we're a little bit out of integrity with ourselves. Because when you get to that thing that you want to commit to, it's like a love relationship, right? Like, oh, how many guys, you know, that oh, they wouldn't settle down, wouldn't settle down, wouldn't settle down. They meet this one girl, and it's over. So the thing is, when that lines up, when you're when you're in the right place, you want to do it, and you want to start, and you want to do one. And here's where value gets crazy. If you're not, if you don't think big enough to be able to give it away in the beginning, then you miss the whole idea here. Because in the beginning, you have to give it away, or you have to make it a great value uh, in order to get people uh, interested. Uh, let me see. Where am my aunt right now? Good going, Michelle. I love your aunt. Uh, ayahuasca brings clarity. Absolutely. Passion is the driving force. Couldn't agree with you more. Lisa, super helpful. On fire message. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, is plant medicine dangerous? It's only dangerous if you don't want to know the truth. So, so a lot of people come here. A lot of people come here and they're like, like, they're here to find out their truth, and when they get off that plane and they get out of our cars and they're at our place here, and I look at them and they're scared shit because they're afraid of the thing that they're looking for. So it is, it's scary. It's, there's, there's, there's parts of it that are scary. I always say this to people. Uh, you come to Rhythmia, and, and don't take my word for it. Go to TripAdvisor. We can't pay all these people to say this shit. It's impossible, but the, the place changes their lives. But it's the hardest easy week or the easiest hard week of their life. It's this is work. This is work. Uh, and and I will tell you this: making money is work. So, so like, uh, and it's only work. The work is front end loaded. So I'm telling you just some things about it. The work is front end loaded. So that the longer that you're in it, the harder in the beginning, the easier it gets at the end. It's going to take you longer than you think, and you're going to be more successful than you think. It's going to take you longer than you think, and you're going to be more successful than you think as long as you're aligned from the beginning. Jerry, you are Jor L. I don't know what Jor L is. Hi, Dio. Uh, I'm so committed to the vision. I catch my need to make it happen. Thanks, Mary. Uh, Paula Ripley, ready for round two of Rhythmia Transformation? Come on down, Paula. Uh, Jamie, Hydroid, I've launched MindChill 360. It's a mission that's given mindfulness to a digital generation. In a way that speaks to them in eight weeks, I had 10 million views, 150 10. I've given away on Facebook. And here's what people are saying. Jamie, go to town. Here's an example. This, this, I, I wonder if you're, how old are you, Jamie? Uh, you seem like you're a young guy. My eyes are shut. Uh, Jamie Goldblatt, who started his company and giving it away and doing, he's walking off this kid to the sky is gonna, you're gonna hit it out of the park. That's the right way. Uh, good job, brother. Really good job. Good job, man. Uh, Sarah Levitt, 
come on down, sir. Come to Rhythmia. So, so these are some questions. If if anybody has anything, a specific thing, and you want to to ask it and see if I can help you uh, in some way about about your business or the truth of yourself or whatever. So, so let's just go back to the steps, okay? So, if we want to make 2018 right, and 2018 is a gift, a gift of a year. This year is a gift. I can tell you what. The medicine's changing me so much, and I'm so full of like love for the thing. I can't tell you, and it's given us this blessed opportunity to be alive in this year. And why be alive and suffer? You know, uh, pain's kind of mandatory. Suffering's optional. So, so let's not suffer. Let's try to let's really make it something. And to make it something, let's get to steps two and three. Who am I in this moment? What is my business in this moment? What is the truth about my situation in this moment? And where do I want to go exactly? Those are the two things. Let's get them down. And then let's make a commitment. So I'm going to tell you, uh, this is the, the kind of crazy shit that goes on in my mind and always has. When I look at my business, I say, okay, I, I'm either going to make this a success financially or I'm going to die doing it. So like that's the kind of commitment. This this involves, like, um, with your business, if it's what you love, you ha have to sit there and you have to say that. You have to say, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it, and I don't give a crap what anybody says. This is what I'm doing. This is the truth, and I'm right. Now you got to be water, and water is persistent. If you ever do this, just take a look. I remember as a kid, it used to freak out because uh, our roof was pitched like this, and then there was concrete sidewalk uh, on the front of it. And where the water hit the concrete, it, it, it made holes. And I thought, how the hell can that be? How can raindrops of water do that? And the key is persistence. And that's the one that we've got to have. We've got to have persistence. Uh, in, my, in my business, like I'm not the best marketer in the world. I want to be. I love talking about it, but I'm not the best at it. I have a, my wife is a tremendous uh, marketing ideas person. She's brilliant. So I let her uh, do her thing. So like the, the, the thing is you just got to be honest about what honest about what you're doing and, and honest about your own business. Let me see if there's some here I want to see. Do you know I didn't come back but a Buddha after plant medicine. I didn't come back a Buddha after plant medicine. Hi Dio. I don't know. Did you do plant medicine here? Uh, I don't know if, if he did it here. Uh, but but if you if you didn't I don't I don't know <laughs> uh, it becomes confusing what I want to do the discovery has been a process ah so 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 let's just see I am 22 and I'm going to take I for the first time in a month and a half I have big dreams about my life future contributions to the world business I dream big I think about asking questions about that on my second night should I do such a thing absolutely so like. Here's here's the thing. Is it Filippo, Filippa, Filippa, Sarah, Sarah? So Sarah, here's here's the thing. So when you're doing the medicine, the first thing you want to do is reconnect with your soul. And then once you're reconnected with your soul, once you're merged back with your soul, then you ask these questions. And here's the crazy thing. And, and I can say this with about a 99% confidence that once you merge back with your soul. That your questions go away because when you're in yourself you know exactly who you are you know exactly what you want and you know exactly what to do true so like that's why my whole thing here is getting these people inside themselves like that's that's really 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 what what we're we're trying to do and, and we're, we're really successful at it and i tell you when i talk about specifics so here's the deal here out of a hundred people who come through, out of a thousand people who come through the doors, about 935 of them electronically self-report in a survey when they go that they had a life-changing experience while they were while they were here, and that life-changing experience is usually a reconnection or a remerging with their soul. That's what we do, and and that's as specific as uh, as we can get, and that's that's why it feels like we're we're going to be doing good. With the business. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Dio. I've never done plant medicine. Okay, Dio, you got to do some. Uh, Lori Baker, thank you, Jerry. 
to personally make sure I got my miracle. Lori Baker, you got your miracle? Good going. Okay, so so let's make 2018, and let's just talk about a couple other little things like deterrence and accelerance. Okay, so so just think about this. Think about yourself and your energy field. Anything that's creating contra energy is a deterrent. So let's talk about that. Let's say you were Catholic, raised Catholic, and in throughout. Catholicism, let's say, let's say there were, you know, because there's so many different teachers of the Bible and, and, and different kinds of, but let's say you went to Catholic school and you had a nun who was pissed off and she said money was the devil's playbook, uh, that money is the devil. So now in your back of your mind, and she said it to you when you were five, six, eight, and nine, and she pounded it into you. So you think, oh my God, not only can I not touch my penis, I can't make money because the devil's there. So now you're carrying this thing. Now as you get older, you're thinking, you know, that was probably bullshit, that, that the money, but it's in there. So as long as there's a contra energy, uh, it's going to be harder for you to make money. So in your energy field, you want to eliminate all those contra energies. You want to, so how do you do that? You get super, super, super clean on the first part of it, which is that you're worth it. You're worth it. Why should I have an easy life when so many people have a hard life? Why should I have an easy life when so many people have a hard life? If this gets down to you, are you worth it? Are you worth it? Are you are you worthy of having an easier financial life? I hope so. I really, really hope so. Because if you think you're not worthy of, of having a financially successful life, then that's over. So I'm going to try to try something else. So because you'll never make money. You know, and if you do, if 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 you know, the, the, the mafia used to say things that say, a fool and his money are lucky enough to get together in the first place. So the thing is this, is that, is that if, you, if you really believe you're unworthy and, and you win the lottery, then, then don't worry because in three years you'll be broken. Again. It's just the way that it works. So really, so the first thing you want to do is, and why would someone think they're unworthy? All right? I'll tell you why. And this is, I'm, I'm letting the cat out of the bag here, but... The real reason why somebody would think they're unworthy is because something happened to them when they were young and, and when they were young and it made them leave their soul to become someone else. And then what this imprinted on their brain is I'm not enough. And until this I'm not enough is done, it doesn't matter what you do, you're not going to feel worthy. And that's why we, we do what we do here. This is, this is what we do and, uh, and we do it here. So, so the first thing is, Collectively, let's get our energy field straight for 2018. I know what my goals are. I know uh, what I want to do in 2018. Uh, and I feel blessed because I know it already happened. Here's an accelerant. I already put myself in the feeling of having this already have happened in 2018. Uh, so I already know that feeling, and I'm already vibrating at it and attracting it in. Okay, now I want you guys to do the same thing. To be truthful about where you're at, where you're at. To be really honest of what you expect 2018 to look like in detail. Not, I want it to be a better year than last year. That's not going to do it. Okay? You've got to be, you've got to look at it in detail what you want 2018 to look like. And, and if you do those things, it's going to provide you uh, with exactly a, here, here's the crazy part about this. That energetically, if you're honest about yourself and your company, in your business and what you're charging and what you're offering and you're truthful and you know exactly what it is that you want in this coming year, then your mind already knows that that's well, that you're worthy of having that. And because of that, it vibrates at it and it draws it in. It's simple, simple, it requires work and it requires persistence and it requires all those things, but that is the truth of the truth. So uh, that's, that's the truth. So let's just see here. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, great, guys. Uh, I think I'm done for the day. I want to thank you. I want to tell you that. Uh, please do me a favor and share this thing. If you know anybody in the spiritual business that, that's having trouble or struggling or wants to improve their business, wants to get better at it, or wants to, wants to, to grow it or to do whatever, please share this for them because uh, it, it can really, really, really help. And, uh, and I want to tell you that, that, that I can't wait to see it down here at Rhythmia. 
and 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 we're going to have a fantastic year. And then every Saturday anymore, we're, I'm going to interview the people that had the greatest miracle. Hopefully, my Mevo will be working by next by next week, and I'll be able to start on time. I'm a big guy about showing up on time, and today it was late, and I'm sorry. Uh, but again, we love you guys. We welcome you, invite you to Rhythmia. Come down here, and it will change your life. And I mean, this will really change your life. Like, come here. Uh, I'm a big uh, fanatic guy about numbers, right? And the, the crazy thing about what we do here is that it sticks. It actually stays with people forever. So, so please come down and get yours. Uh, come and visit us. Uh, we love you guys. Uh, may 2018 be a banner year. May you thrive in 2018. And when I say thrive, I mean it in the Jerry Maguire sense of the quant. May you have the whole thing in 2018. God bless you. God keep you. And we will see you soon. Peace out, man.